Good day, folks. I get somebody volunteer to make some noise. Make Hello. Some noise. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, my speaker's working. We have two way communication. All right. Let's get everybody to sign in. Today is the 15th. And Brandon, I just added some um, thoughts to the revoca revoking trust to an artifact. All right. I think it's the problem with doing Monday mornings is we post stuff on Friday, we try to take the weekend off, and then we're scrambling to get something in when we in between our 8 a.m. Monday morning meeting. And okay, let's give the couple of minutes. Rina is here. So let me get some water and then we'll, I'll be back in a minute. We have the stability of incoming people. I think we do. All right, Marina. Um, so we have four things. I think yours is the most well, Mike likely. Well, I don't know, probably the first two. Well, maybe all three, but my last one which should go relatively quick. Um, let's try to do about 15 minutes each. And I'll just, that'll give us a little bit at the end for whatever conversation. Yeah, I think that the actual text section I added is pretty short, so that should be should be doable. Um, let me just get this ready for screen sharing really fast. Sorry. All right, we're here. Um, All right, is everyone seeing the top notary design overview thing? Okay, cool. So the main thing I added was just this section here um, based on the discussion last week to kind of talk more about how this effort relates to the notary v2 goals stated in the um, in the requirements repo. So there's a link there. Um, yeah, so this goes over kind of which pieces of it um, are the reason we're doing this type of implementation and then we can go more into what the implementation is. So um, the first thing is the signatures attesting to the authenticity and or certification. I think this is similar to um, the existing design as well um, with the difference that the TUF metadata um, kind of provides information about who signed the image as well as the fact that there is a signature. So you can kind of trace that chain of who's authorized to sign an image. Um, that's kind of a minor difference there. The other ones I think are a little bit bigger, like the key hierarchies and delegations was one of the stated requirements. And TUF very clearly through the TUF, to the, through the, sorry, the targets metadata provides that kind of hierarchy delegation so that you really know who's trusted to sign each thing. Um, and also that prevents some, you know, key sharing and some of those other things that we, we don't really want. Key revocation, including private and air gapped air registries, so this is just talking about the, um, the, you know, we've been talking about key revocation a lot. So this goes over that again, briefly, how Tuff uses the implicit and explicit key revocation, which we, we have other conversations about, but yeah, that's kind of summarized there. 
And then the key acquisition must support users from hobbyists, open source projects, large software vendors. Um, and that's kind of what, where our tough design has evolved to allow these different sort of different routes, wh whether it's the registry for larger registries, public registries where you, that makes more sense, or whether it's for these organizations where you need some more separation of control, you can have the different routes for the different organizations when that separation is needed, um, which I think kind of addresses that, that step. And as well as kind of addressing these, I kind of just added a note that um, is also, we also adapted the design to work with the other goals of the project. Um, the TUF doesn't specifically address those goals, but I think it can work well with um, other things that address those goals, like the moving between registries and other pieces like that. Like that's not why we're doing TUF, but that's I think something that will work as well, um, basically. Does anyone have questions about this or kind of the, any other questions about like why we're using TUF, why this um, piece of the design is important? I think the piece that you're talking about, the hierarchy of keys that can be used to sign makes a lot of sense, whether it's individuals or different nodes of a multi-node build server, right? Like you've got four different build servers and you want to know that things that came out of build server A were different from build server B and C. So if build server A winds up being compromised in some way, um, you can differentiate the services, the subservices versus um, people, because we hope in most cases, these things aren't signed by people. Um, <clears throat> so that, that hierarchy makes a lot of sense. You can see, hey, this all goes back, yeah, Wabbit Network signed it, but if you care about a level of detail, you know, because something happened, you can see that not only did Wabbit Network signed it, but it was build server A to somebody that cares. Um, that part makes a lot of sense. The place that I was struggling a little bit, well, there's two parts. There's a larger constant updating thing, which we can talk about, but the multi-signature piece, um, I was trying to understand how you're proposing that, or maybe that, maybe I'm jumping down below, so I should let you go and see. Right. I think that's fine. If you have questions there as well. Um, if anyone has questions here, maybe we should do that first, but I can, I'm happy to go over that as well. Um, I'll give it a second and then I'll answer your question. <laughs> um, totally fine. If anyone else has questions here, and then I'm happy to go into that as well. Um, I had a comment here. Um, I think, um, you know, it's great you're calling out the goals of the overall Loader V2 project, um, but we'd also kind of come up with some requirements we'd agreed upon in the key management space. Uh, I think calling some of those out specifically um, would be helpful. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that um, the main reason I haven't yet is I think that document is still a little bit up in the air. I might be wrong. But I'm happy to add that here as well. Um, whenever. Yeah, there's, there's. I think the the pull request that we have out right now um, contains all the all the requirements we have agreed upon. Um, mm -hmm. The the three that are still up in the air are ones that uh, I've pulled out from that drop requirement. So I think that's a good place to start. The other three docs, as we come to agreement, there we'll we'll need to come back and revise this doc to include those areas as well. Yeah, totally. That makes, yeah, I can, I, I'll go through um, the agreed upon ones this week and, you know, iterate as needed. I think that makes a lot of sense. And we can get them agreed. We should get them merged. I mean, that, that, I, even this document, I realized a lot of the comments I made were stuff that was after it's merged and, and that's fine. Um, but let's, it's really hard to track all the loose things that are PRs versus things are merged. So mm -hmm. let's, as a group, let's try to focus on things we could agree, get those committed. And it's not that we have to, they're etched in stone per se, we can go back and change it, but let's, it's really hard to reference something in a PR versus something that's been merged. So like Niaz, let's, let's try to get, and I, I know I've been bad, I've been trying to free up more time, um, but if you feel like the content is ready for review and ready to be merged, then let's mark that and let's see if we can get that done. All right, and then sorry, Steve, back to your other question about the multi-signatures. Um, so just to make sure I understand the question, is are you asking about um, like how tough um, organizes signatures in the in the target's metadata, or you're asking about like how multiple different signature you how you can require multiple signatures for a single um, artifact? It was a little bit of both, and I I had a really good write up where I was quoting and commenting, quoting and commenting, and the lovely browser internet failed me and lost <laughs> it. So. 
I was trying to reconstruct as much, but it was too frustrating to try to go back and get everything from detail. Um, the there was a reference the way you were talking about there's two parts the way multiple signatures would get added i was making i wanted to make sure that we were maintaining this immutability aspect of a registry that if i add another signature i'm not changing anything to do with the other content that's already there are they truly additive was the first part and i'll come back to the how many signatures should be considered trusted to to move forward but because i can do that more as a policy yeah and i guess um i think i'll answer probably a slightly different but related question so like so the way the targets metadata works is like each targets metadata is independent of the others well mostly independent of the others like they do delegate to each other but as far as uploading and being valid they're independent of each other um the independent i'll call them files for lack of a better word they're you know independent art of infinite things. Um, and you could update one of those, re-upload it, and everything else would remain valid. Um, as far as individual signatures on those target metadata files, I think that's a little bit trickier to answer because I think that the, you know, the, the target's metadata isn't valid really until it has a certain number of signatures attached to it. Um, and I think this is one of the, the, the benefits of using the target's metadata instead of directly signing the artifact is that you could to update the signature you just update the target metadata which then points to the artifact um you know not like not like points in a, a registry sense but it, it includes data about the artifact um you and, seem to be implying like i view the number of signatures that must be associated with something to be considered valid a policy decision so when web network signs a piece of content they don't know or even care what Acme Rocket says. It's like yeah. they're saying they signed it and that's fine. In the Acme Rockets environment, in dev, they might only need one signature to consider it valid to promote. And then in the next environment, they might need two. They might need a signature from the scanning uh, piece of code and the um, uh, functional test that says, okay, those two things passed, they, there's two signatures. So those get added to the image. And then when it goes to production, um, it says, whoop, did it pass security and did it pass functional testing? Great, okay, okay yeah. move. I think How I would, understand the concern yeah. now. Um, so basically, the, so the way this would, that, that particular situation would work is that you would have, um, so basically you would encode that policy into a piece of targets metadata. And I think that in, in this design, we allow that to be either in the target's metadata defined by the registry and mapped there, or in some user-defined one that just encodes this policy, basically. And then that, the, the policy that's in that target's metadata says, OK, I want signatures from Rabbit Networks and from Acme Rockets. I want you know, three signatures from Acme Rockets, two signatures from Rabbit Networks, because that's, you know, that, that's our policy, and that I want to make sure that those are the correct number of signatures. And then now that, once like the client knows that policy, it goes and it tries to download the targets metadata from Webic Networks for this, which is basically the signature from Webic Networks for this. It looks at the number of signatures on that, makes sure it matches their policy, does the same thing for Acme Rockets. So those, those are two independent things, and they don't, they don't have to be signing the same targets metadata. They can sign two different pieces that point to the same artifact. Does that make sense? And no, I can make I that more a little clear. loss. Yeah, I mean, it might, it might help to show, like I've included in some of these where people have asked questions, I've included a document that shows, like, here's what the manifest would look like for this particular case. Yeah, I can have a manifest for a, a diagram. So I think a whiteboard helps a lot with this. So I can kind of draw it out too. Because um, here's the, the thing. I, I really struggle that policy is embedded into an artifact. Like, I think policy is it's the same oh. reason why I don't think vulnerabilities should be assumed to be in the artifact either, because things have things have vulnerabilities that we discover after yeah. in most cases so you want to have an added it's an external entity that stores that information yeah so sorry I, if that wasn't clear the um the policy isn't in the artifact it's in a piece of targets metadata which can be defined by the client um you know like any other configuration would be okay so i don't have to push I can push the individual signatures, the scanning software that scans it and found that it's whatever compliant, the, that pushes a signature to the registry. And then the functional test that says, yep, this thing passed and it's been stamped as certified, you know, stamped as certified. I can push that as a separate signature as well. 
and they're not they're not or even ordered. Those could happen in different orders. Yeah, totally. And then I could have a special policy at my deployment node, like through OPA. If you look at our scenarios diagram, that yeah. could somehow. So this targets metadata is not something that's pushed to the registry. So it's uh, it's a little bit of both. And part of this is is um, because part of the reason this is confusing is because of the adjustments we made for the Node v2 version of Tuff. And I think maybe there's a better name for the um, client specified configuration thing, but okay. that's, you know, so, um, so, but to be clear, so like the, basically what, what, you know, I envision right now is that the registry has kind of a default set of um, configurations and then the client can define their own, um, it, you know, and I think that in some cases, like for prior registries and stuff, the client will always define their own, they'll always have a configuration that, that does that. But if you imagine for something like Docker, it makes also makes sense to have a default public um, configuration that says, okay, you know, this is the person for, this is the signature you should use for this um, artifact kind of thing. So Marina, I wanna hit on a quick point you said there when you were saying that you could pull the targets from say the Acme Rockets repo and then pull it from your local Wabbit Networks um, registry server repo, wherever you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. Are you also envisioning is a potential that we could have all of these targets metadata in the same repository, but separate. And the reason I'm thinking of that is you might want to clone the upstream repository to something local behind the firewall in your own environment and have that constantly synced. And you want to know that the upstream Acme Rockets uh, signing data is identical to what's upstream. And so you're copying that verbatim and you don't want to touch that. Is that something that makes sense in this model? I think so. Um, so the, um... Like the piece of tech that would probably be most useful there is this like idea of mapping metadata, which is really just a client configuration saying from which repository to pull things. And you can do from multiple repositories. Um, I don't know if I have anything in this document mapping that out yeah. at the moment. I, but, I think um, this would be a server side thing. And so from the client side, it's gonna see multiple targets in the same repository. Yeah, and so, and so then- um, so if the, if the configuration is set up like that, the client could then be configured just to pull it all locally, which I think in a lot of cases would make more sense because then, you know, yep. you, you can control your own uptime and all that. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think these are definitely really good examples that, um, I think some of them are covered, but I think calling that specifically would make a lot of sense. And so I will, um, Add that either to here or to the other document. Um, yeah, with like exact scenarios and walking through this. But yeah. And not a big deal, but something that's bit me on some of the other pictures we've got is in dark mode, these don't look quite as pretty. Oh yeah, the, the black. The, black the transparency text, yeah. doesn't work so well, yeah. Okay. I've just been putting a white background <laughs> behind them. Just to keep it simple. I'm the rebel. It, it was it was a good a good example. Uh, thank you for being the rebel that was being vocal as opposed to the others that were just struggling. So it's an easy fix when you think about it. Yeah. So the other piece that I had some questions on is the um, if you go down to your diagram, it's the Coke and Pepsi problem that we keep discussing. That ha that that's, well, yeah, actually, sorry, you're right. It is the uh, this one. I think I think it's that one. Yeah, where we have contractual obligations that we can't even acknowledge that content exists in a registry. So we can't make any assumptions around two, two companies or even two orgs within the same company. Like we've got yeah. to have complete isolation. Was there something about this that suggests that otherwise? Um, no. So I think that this example image is using a registry because um, I think it makes a simpler example here. But I think that we have loosened, I think, up the idea that the root should be only tied to a registry. I think in a lot of cases that makes sense, but I think that it should also be possible to have multiple roots on the same registry. For example, Coke and Pepsi could each have their own independent one um, if there's like, if, if you really truly can't combine them. I think that there are, you know, some security gains you get from, some security and simplicity gains really you get from combining them. But when, it, you know, if and when that's not possible, um, I don't see anything particularly wrong with just hosting, this, doing the exact same system, but splitting it. Coke and Pepsi get their own um, independent metadata files. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, Coke and Pepsi would definitely get their own. The question is, 
within Coke and Pepsi that they want to have subgroups that don't want their information shared or acknowledged across them as well is the other problem. And the, the general thing that I saw, because I saw this as a reference to air-gapped environments, there's this assumption that when things are all together and you have full visibility of everything, it's the most secure. But if you start breaking it down to smaller units, it's considered not secure. And yet the, those customers are asking for more isolation because they want more security. So the idea yeah. that up like somehow is less secure in that is going in the opposite direction. Yeah, I think there's two things here. I think, first of all, um, we created the system with the snapshot Merkle trees where the only IV information would be hashes, which I, um, so Can't secure hashes, which are not backwards traceable, as far as we know, um, using like, you know, SHA-512 or your hash algorithm of choice. Um, so that's part one. And then part two, two is that like the reason that the, the snapshot and other aggregate pieces give you a larger measure of security is that um, you can know more as um, you get better rollback protection, basically. You, you get a better um, view of what's currently valid on the registry, and, um, and that gives you a better view of um, yeah, when, when something goes wrong um, in some other package, you then get a better view of that. I think these snapshot Merkle trees also in some ways address that concern um, in that if you have auditors auditing the, the Merkle tree um, and auditing the contents of that and they, they detect something that goes wrong, you can then um, get a similar protection using that. I think it's a little bit more work to make sure that that auditability um, goes through, but I think maybe in some cases that makes sense, even for smaller projects that don't need the scalability of the Merkle tree, they can use it for um, you know the auditability, kind of using these, so basically using it kind of as a transparency log to get um, a similar snapshot protection. Yeah, I think, but you keep on coming back to the, the same piece of that there's this concept of a, a public registry where I'm trying to make sure I have the most updated version of a specific labeled thing. And somehow I would do that across multiple companies. I, I, this is the part where it's just, we can't even begin with the concept. There's any kind of data sharing whatsoever of any type, even acknowledgement that other data exists across two companies or two entities uh, within even the same company. And I, the piece that I, and it, it comes back to the other piece of where the having to do a constant update I think I'm just getting more and more, and I wanted to make this more of a discussion, but I wanted to get to the other, and I was gonna write it up more and talking about the, the, the expansion of registries when you think about it, uh, from a couple of public to all the private, to all the orgs within that private on how many things are getting constantly updated. I'm, it's not just that computers couldn't technically scale. I just don't think, I'm struggling with why it's the priority when there's only a few things few important things that are you do want to know they have the latest tag and it kind of goes to Brandon's tag signing conversation but I, I I just want to I want to make sure we keep on coming back to whether it be content moving into an air gap environment it can't be less secure because it's going in an air gap environment it has to be more secure and there can't be any assumptions that, that any kind of data is shared between multiple entities yeah I think that the the air gap one makes sense. And I think that with basically, a, um, there's a couple options for basically just extending the timestamp allowances, um, including I think I, one where you make sure that it's you know more recent than the previous one <clears throat> and within some window or whatever makes sense for that. I think that the, um, the shared data one, I feel like it, I, I think that I've addressed it by allowing to split the roots into different things or allowing these snapshot Merkle trees, which only have again, secure hashes of information on the registry. And this is, it's, it's secure hashes, by the way, of the metadata, not of the actual artifacts themselves. And so you couldn't even use it to. Yeah, um, that's what Obama said about uh, metadata of phone records. I mean, I'm just, I'm somewhat playing that the game at it, but. There's secure hashes of it though. It's, it's not even the metadata matter. itself. It doesn't matter. Right. We cannot no, think... acknowledge the content even exists. Yeah, but that's where I think the splitting of the roots um, allows for that as well, um, to really, to, to, to condense it down to, to that. And it really, at that point, if, if you split, if, if for a specific use case, you have to split the root down that much, um, you could almost even combine, I don't want to say this too quickly without thinking about it, but the snapshot and timestamp would both be very small. And you it would basically just be an auditable thing saying, this is what it is now. 
we can check this later and make sure that you know it, it, if something when, when something goes wrong we can see when you know exactly the point in time when it went wrong because of these snapshots um yeah you made a comment earlier that um combining roots uh would make it more secure um i'm not quite sure i followed the reasoning behind that um yeah so when you have a root for just for example's sake a whole registry that contains lots of different um targets metadata lots of different images that um basically that the tag signing piece becomes more secure because the um you get you that the um snapshot metadata you when you when a client downloads the snapshot metadata they check that um you know that nothing in that snapshot file has been decreased um so in the in the simple case without the merkle trees and it's similar with them but just for simplicity um so if if a client on day one downloads the snapshot metadata file they download you know image a from company x and then the next day they download that same image from company x but then cover uh, some image like d from company y any better company names <laughs> they um that that image has been rolled back so the version number has decreased from that client's view they can actually see that rollback on everything that's within that snapshot file and not just the particular images that they've downloaded because otherwise all they could see is that the um the the image that they downloaded is newer they can't see that the, the next image they're going to download has been rolled back as well that's kind of the protection you get and it also gives you a little bit more of that um again that auditability that if some if everybody's looking at this one document they can then see when things go wrong anywhere on the registry i, I think this is still on the assumption that there's a few versions of a few products that you're trying to make sure it's the most up to date in well, when we scale to customers trying to deploy software they're building their own software every build is a unique id it's not considered the latest because the newest thing might not actually be the thing that works so they they have to make it they make explicit deployments around what version they deploy yeah i think that this is basically this is important as long as the we are supporting the tag signing scenario and maybe we should talk there about that scenario but as long as you're supporting tag signing you need to make sure that you have the most recent tag and, this, and so you want to make sure you have the most recent metadata about those tags. And um, yeah. Niaz, you were trying to say something? Yeah, I'm not quite sure I followed the interdependency there, um, right? Like a, a, having, I think like a diagram or like a step-by-step, -step, like that comparison would make sense because if you had individual roots, you'd have individual snapshots, Merkle trees, right? Like I, I'm, I'm still failing to follow how uh, uh, the individual structure would be any different than sort of like having like a single uh, single key. Um, yeah, and I'm, I can maybe draw it out better again. I think diagrams help here, so I, I, I can work on that. I think it, it'll make this a little more clear. Yeah, if I can try to rephrase it, maybe you can say if I'm on topic or on topic with this one. Um, are you trying to say when you have a combined root with a lot of different things under it, with a bigger scope to your root, that mm -hmm. any compromise of that snapshot and timestamp stuff just has a bigger blast radius. And so therefore it has more visibility and more opportunities to get caught. Is that? Yeah, kind of I think there's, that's that's one of the big pieces, more opportunities to get caught. And also if you as a user are downloading from, multi, from two, for example, different places on that registry, you get um, that kind of rollback protection for both combined, um, which is just a little bit stronger protection. Um, I can try and figure out a more like approachable way to present this. There's a I can share a paper as well, but I don't know if that's the best way to to share that. I you know, and this is probably a good kickoff to Brandon's next one for tag signing. I, I think this kind of goes back to this again, the same thing that is do people reference a fewer set of things that I just want to know is the latest the mo the latest version of that label, that tag. I'll use tag mm -hmm. label. And I don't, and I'm not, the majority of quantity of content is not dependent on that. The majority of content would actually be a unique label, a unique tag, sorry, I flipped using label. It is a unique tag. No, it just so happens that the, a lot of the things that people build from in the container space do come from these, what I call stable tags, right? It, it is node nine. And I do wanna know what's the latest version of node nine. 
at the same token, the latest version of Node 9 is not necessarily the one that I want because the latest version of Node 9 just did a change that broke me. So I, I think we just have to be, I, I get the, you know, I mean, you think about it, tough, the update framework wants to make sure that the latest version, you, you're definitely getting the latest version of something. Mm -hmm. But that is how Solar Winds got exploited. They said, hey, here's an update. And it was the latest version and it did come from Solar Winds. So it would have certified that the latest update to SolarWinds should be installed because it's the latest version. It came out of their build environment. Yeah, and I think we could get into the whole supply chain aspect of this um, as well. But I think that the bigger thing is that if a particular user, a particular um, system doesn't want the actual most recent, I think the registry ecosystem allows them to, to not do that, to pin it to a particular digest that they're downloading instead. Um, I think that the, the problem is that not everybody does that. And so the, everybody who doesn't do that needs a, needs a way to make sure that the thing that they're downloading is the correct thing. Yeah, I think it's definitely a user choice. If you don't want the latest Node 9 because the most recent person breaks your build, then that should be a choice of the users making, not something mm -hmm. that you're relying on an indeterminate behavior of the notary for. Right. In fact, your copy of Node 9, so what you could do is as you, because hopefully you're not dependent on Node 9 from some public registry, you taking that public image, bring it into your environment. So let you take you take node nine for the first time and, mm. and it tests and it's fine. And now you put it in your registry and it's signed by the node community, whatever that means, and Acme Rockets. So you're good. But now there's a new version of node nine. And as you test it, turns out it doesn't work. And you don't know why. It could be a security fix. It could just be some funky piece of code of yours that depended on something they removed. So it's not that it's insecure, it's just incompatible. Mm -hmm. The older version of Node 9 still takes stays tagged as Node 9 in your environment. That signature should still be valid. The cert should still be valid. And then when maybe either the community figures out themselves, they put a third version of Node 9 out that resolves either resolves the problem or Acme Rockets fixes their problem because it could be on either side. Then they have a choice when to float forward to the newest version of Node 9. In all of those cases, all of those signatures and certs are still valid. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that there's a, but I think that there is a difference between just signing the digest and when there is tag signing needed. I think that this system would work totally for signing the digest as well. Um, but I think that the, the problem is that registries today support polling by tag. And as long as registries today support it, I feel like there needs to be a way to make that secure. No, we do need to sign signatures, which is again, back the tee up for Brandon. But you, Brandon, you were saying something. I was gonna say to your, to your comment there of saying that you're going to clone this into your internal repo. And so now you've got node nine signed by company co and not node co, or it's going to be signed by both. When you're using this internally, I don't think a lot of companies are going to be looking at this and saying, okay, all of our builds are now looking that is signed by node. I think they're going to say, we internally attested this. We need to verify our internal signatures on this thing. And that's all we care about. And so, so they have transitions. So they might, they might only import if it's signed by Node or Docker Hub, but once yes. it's inside, they're only deploying because of Acme Rockets. Yes. And that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I think that could be done with like, yeah, the configuration again. Um, yeah. I think that's definitely a real world thing where the new version doesn't work, but I think that that's down to company policy more so than whatever we do. <laughs> All right, tag signing. Tag signing, yeah, I think this is a nice transition. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I've got two of these. It was originally just one and Justin had a great comment, so I've broken into two, but I'll start with 48. And that's adding this scenario 7.1. And effectively what I'm looking at is just to say, let's make sure that we are signing tags and that we can verify if a tag was reverted to an older version. And so the risk I'm thinking of is an attacker gets into the registry similar to 7.0, that's why I made this 7.1. And the attacker is able to modify some stuff. They don't necessarily have to modify the actual signed content. They can just revert a tag to a previous state of the tag. And if we aren't signing the tags and verifying that those are current signatures, we could say, let's grab a version of Alpine version three, and that could give us an Alpine version three that has a known CVE. And we would say that's perfectly fine because someone at some point signed it. And so that's where this scenario is saying, let's make that not possible by 
verifying that tag signature and verifying that's current. And I'm looking at doing this as something that the signer is deciding when they want to not sign the old ones. Maybe that's something that goes into Tuff makes that decision for us. But at least for right now, I'm saying that this is up to the signer to say we no longer want this digest to be valid for tag version three. So I can let people read that if they need a few minutes to read this. Um, but this was kind of the overall point here was just to make sure that we couldn't have some kind of reverting of that tag to go to a previous state. Has anybody read it? Because maybe that is a, the 940 till 940 or 40 minutes after yeah. we read for people in yeah. different time zones. And what I can do while people are debating that one, I could also bring the other one that kind of came out of this if we want to. Do we want to spend more time on this one or do we want to look at the other one and look them both together? Uh, I can't read and listen at the same time. Yeah. And I've, yeah. you guys had, you had this out for a couple of days, so we could have read it before. Yeah. That's why if it's just me, then we should go forward. A lot of the points here are almost verbatim from above from the 7.0. I just changed a few of them that made sense to change. So this is the one, so the what we were talking about here is how do you differentiate an evil person versus a good person? So let's use our previous example of node nine has an update and it turned out it didn't just break acting rockets, broke everybody. It's the left pad scenario, yep. for instance. Um, so they go, whoops, and they do wanna, now whether they roll back or roll forward is a different thing because you can argue both cases. But let's say that they did intentionally roll back. They, they wanna go back to digest A. How do we differentiate the valid scenario where Digest A gets rolled back versus the evil person that want to put between so Digest back to Digest A? To me, a. this is always a roll forward scenario. And so you're going to roll forward to a new version <laughs> Sorry. of the node nine. And so in I'm that at Jay's comment. <laughs> in that signing of the node, I gotta pull the comments up now, don't I? Um, in that signing of this, you're gonna to need to make sure that um you're probably moving forward to a newer version of this tag signature. And so maybe you've got some revisions on those tag signatures saying, here's the newest version of that one. And it may point back to the old SHA, but it's just gonna be a newer revision of this tag reference. So this is, if, if I'm good, and I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole distinguishing good and evil. I was just laughing at that. It, I'll, I'll, I'll read that, but um, the evil person, does my can push can pull the digest a and do a push oh, sorry let's rephrase obviously there's no uh, there's no anonymous push registries or there shouldn't be so they have to at least get push access to the registry so if they get push access to the registry um can they push digest a back to node nine yeah so in that case like Okay, so no digest A was signed, but it was not, but it, and it's not, and it was signed as tag nine, but it's not currently. So then the question, what we haven't solved today was tag signing. We said we're doing digest signing. So the evil, was it Alice's evil? Do I remember this right? There's some names of people. Anyway, the evil person um, got push rights, but they didn't get the private key. So now, as long as we can say that, that that tag is not signed, then we know that it wasn't valid. If the valid person did want to roll it back, then they have the access to the private key as well, and they can sign that digest. So that's part of it without fully reading the RFC here. Yeah. Jay, does it's that kind of cover that, or is there a completely different thing? I don't want to skip past your pointer here. Oh, it's a joke. Okay, sorry. Well, that All was right. fun. <laughs> so this is extending scenario seven, where we were saying scenario seven is that the attacker pushed some non-signed content. And this is saying, well, 
they've got some signed content from the previous version that this vulnerable release of this code was out there. And so they just changed all the pointers to point back to that. Yeah. And if we're not signed tags, they can do yeah. that. And then everybody starts running that vulnerable code. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussions about this issue in Tough, and basically rolling forward um, is the thing that makes the most sense in most number of cases. Because once you've you know recovered from the attack, you can then just sign a valid thing, you know, just call version three, version five now, and it'll be all right. Although there is, a, I think, a very subtle um, distinctions we make about a um, what we call a fast forward attack, where an attacker pushes like a, a version number to in max. And so that and no, no future version could be considered valid. And I think this is another thing that Tuff gets you is protection against that attack as well, the availability to, to recover from that by rotating keys. But yeah, this is, this is a really good scenario to think about. Yeah, to me, it's what is a tagged signature. And so if it's a pointer, there's probably going to be some kind of signed metadata there that says this tag points to this digest. And then something in there should just have a revision number and you know some kind of expiration time on it, other things like that. And so there just needs to be some reference like that. And then you have the ability to increment that. Well, I think the thing we're really saying is we, we should sign a tag. We haven't addressed that yet. And yeah. in fact, I was going to part of, I don't want to tease too much into it, but that's part of what I was going to get to prototype two and prototype three. Like I think prototype, like prototype two were, we're making progress on, we'll talk about this, but prototype three, I definitely want to bring in like how, how should we sign tags? Because not just how, but I mean, I guess it is how, but the point is we, while I do believe the roll forward concept in many ways, the question is, do I have to rebuild old content, which I may not actually be able to rebuild the same way. So it's, it, I think it's important to be able to say that in a registry that has this concept of tags, which are, can be or movable and digest, which aren't, that I, we need to be able to say that the newer, uh, that a tag can point to an older thing and it be considered valid and attestifiable. Attest, is that a word? Verifiable. Um, so I, I think I feel that's like absolutely should be able to. That's to me. That's something that a tag is just a reference. It's just a pointer, and so you should absolutely be able to make a new, a new pointer to an mm -hmm. old digest, and or update an existing pointer. To be fair, like a tag is a pointer. You could argue a tag is a pointer. How do I make sure that that tag can be moved to things and it's verifiable? Yeah, makes sense. All right, so. Being conscious of time here, and I know that we've got a few things going on. I'm going to jump forward in case, unless somebody wants to stop me real quick. To the Jan, was that... yours for this topic or just in general today? No, it's uh, it's more of a general question. Okay. I, I can ask okay. those uh, after the agenda is, is done. Okay, so I'm going to move forward faster so that Jan gets this question in. All right, so adding a scenario for evoking signatures. This, I kind of had snuck in there as one of my little addendum items there and Justin properly pointed out that, hey, I should probably break this out. And so what it's saying is it would be nice there's a way to revoke a signature. And right now we've got the concept of revoking a key out there so the signer can be said that everything he signs, we don't want to trust anymore. But we don't really have the concept of, hey, I've pushed this old digest out there of node version nine CV was out there, left pad, who knows what went on, something massively broke. And so I, as a signer, want to revoke my trust or my signature on just that one digest without revoking everything else. And so that's what this is kind of getting into. Originally, I was thinking about just in the concept of a tag, but if you kind of expand it out to overall scope, that's when it broke into a different scenario because we're also signing digest. So that's- If it's that's that bad, why not just delete it? Say again? If it's that bad, why not just delete it? So can you delete it when we have the ability to copy so can, things? Yeah. You know, you have the ability to mirror these things out there. And so is it ever really deleted at that point? So this is the feedback that I was putting there is the, just because you don't like it doesn't mean somebody else doesn't depend on it. It's somewhat kind of like the example we just talked about before. Yeah. And, so and that goes back. I I think we might answer that earlier when we were saying that this goes back to the 
Acme company, when they bring this internal, they're probably going to mm-hmm. re-sign it as their own signature. And so as long as they're trusting their own signature, I think we're okay on this one. So I guess that part of the, the question I was, and I was rushing because I realized I was getting time to the minute. So I mean, I have to reread what I wrote to see if I, it came out as crisp as what was in my head. But I think what I'm sort of wondering is this really a forwarding concept? Kind of like when you look up a part number that a manufacturer put out and sometime later they said, yeah, we don't, we're not gonna make that part, but this other part is a replaceable. I forget what they, that term is called. Um, and I'm wondering, yeah. is, is that something we should be adding as opposed to you're actually revoking a signature? Like revoking a, a key makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a Revoking question. a signature would also, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, it, it really depends on what you mean by signing something because signing something to a lot of people means that you're just attesting this came from me at some point, but then there gets into this other concept that you sign something, you're saying this is secure. That's what a lot of people are trying to get out of the notary projects. They want to know the stuff they're running is secure. And if you as a vendor that produced an artifact know that this isn't secure, you should be able to tell the users that don't trust that anymore. I, I'm trying not to jump in from Niaz. Go ahead, Niaz. Yes. Was that Niaz or was that Hank? That... Sorry, that was, that was me. Um, yeah, as running like a container scanner, Obviously the things it's looking for over time changes. So if you wanna have it certify that something is free of every CVE it knows about, that's only really good for one point in time, like sort of as a, as a use case here. Yep. And what Hank considers insecure, um, I've just productized his product as Hank. Um, you know, company A versus company A, what they company B considers insecure, and two companies that use companies B's security product are going to be configured differently. So I, I struggle a little bit with this one. As do I? Does a company want to revoke, as opposed to maybe be able to say, "Hey, by the way, you might want to use this other thing instead." But if you want to use that, it's still signed by us. We still signed it. But well, I guess my point is more so like even within the company, if you run it against your scanner and it gives you the thumbs up and signs your container image and you do that next week and it gives you the thumbs down, do you just end up tacking on signatures or anti-signatures at like regular intervals? How does that ever or does that ever interact? Do you just never worry about it? Revoking signatures. Tough side, but go ahead. I was going to say revoking signatures makes sense uh, in the sense that it's a finer scalpel than revoking an entire key because the key could have been used to sign multiple artifacts. And at the end of the day, you're trying to say something I signed before is no longer valid, whatever the reason for it may be. So it's a, it's a, the, the trade off here comes in in terms of uh, what information you are looking for from a revocation perspective. Uh, and this also kind of goes into the allow list and I list model from a tough perspective as well. Like, you know, what are you removing from an allow list versus uh, are you publishing a signature to a deny list? Um, the, uh, the questions I had here um, are, are slightly different. So I'll just kind of wait until the uh, uh, the, the individual signature one um, is addressed, but I think that's a good requirement to have because the blast radius shrinks down significantly. I do want to touch on one thing though, because what people want to get from notary, I, I think to, to somewhat implied by Hank's comment, I think is there is a separation between here is the content that's in a registry and we can uh, with all um, validity say it came from entity A, B, or C. We can't say whether that content is secure or not. It's not really up, like I'm not suggesting the notary is trying to make any of those sayings. It's just saying that it did come from, sorry, integrity, that was the word I was looking for. It's really an integrity stamp that says this content did come from this entity. Now, if that entity got hacked and they're no longer valid, or you know, somebody, the evil person stole entity's, entity A's identity, then that should be, you know, that's the revocation kind of scenario. The idea that when and how and who determines a particular entity's security status, I, I'm just suggesting is an external thing. 
that can be compared to it, but I don't know if it ever gets us attached to the thing. Uh, maybe in a company, you might want to put a flag that says, hey, by the way, this thing is, I don't, we don't consider this particular content usable in this company anymore. So that could be a, a to your point, a, a blacklist. But I, don't, I, I think we want to be careful that, I think notary is really around the integrity of something as opposed to its state of security at any one point. I think I, I generally agree, but I think that even ignoring the security implications, people make mistakes and they might sign something accidentally. And that doesn't mean that their, their key needs to be revoked in every single location, but maybe they want to take back their mistake. You know, they want to say, oh yeah, that, that was actually yeah. the, the dev version, not the prod version of this thing that I pushed or whatever. Can you delete uh, a signature? Is that okay? Like if you can just delete the signature. Well, well but if you delete the signature, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's such now, I was going to say, Steve, I think what your question here is, who is the owner of the revocation action, right? And I think the owner is always the owner uh, that has the root or like owns the root itself. So um, if, uh, if, for example, if a CVE is discovered, uh, it's still not the, uh, I would assume it's not the registry that's, that's revoking the signature. It's still, I think, it, or at least it was implied to me that the person that originally signed the artifact or owns the root that signed the artifact is responsible for revoking that signature, uh, unless I missed something here. Yeah, it's definitely the person that originally signed it has the choice to do that revocation. And one of the implications I threw here that kind of answers Steve's question was, I really wanna make sure an attacker can't go back and take something that you revoked and replay it and say that something that was untrusted by the original signer is now trusted to a client that's receiving this. Is that the tag signing? It, it mirrors with a lot of the tag signing, but it's, but it's okay. you know, same idea. They get into the registry. They are able to push something out there. They don't have access to your key, but they have access to something you previously revoked. They shouldn't be able to pass that off as something you trust. Okay. So with a couple of minutes left, let's do one thing. And, I, and I'm saying this for myself and if others can do as well. Let's try to take the stuff that we feel is stable and get it merged this week. So let's make a conscious effort to go through the various PRs and, and see what subset we can agree and what we don't agree. Let's, for, for the purpose of getting something merged, let's see if we could cull it down. And if we culled it down to one line out of 500, then obviously we didn't make progress, but let's see if we can try to do that. And he has, uh, I'll get to your questions here in the PR year in a bit. Go for it. Oh, I see. You want to do that offline, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Steve, was that, was that your other one? Did you cover both of yours? I, I made it through both of them. Okay, great. I'll, I'll, let me just do a quick prototype two, three, so that we can get to uh, Jen's pieces. Um, people have been asking, like, how we're making progress on Notary, and we obviously got the status report out, but people want to know where they can engage, and Brandon was asking about some places on this last week, too, in addition to the OPA work that people have been asking about. So, and there's some new stuff coming up, and we've always said we wanted this incremental model. So, prototype two, what I was going to propose, and, I, and I, I, I've got it partially written up, but I'll get it posted. I'd like to finish up the discovery and um, uh, acquisition of the associated content, the linked artifact stuff that we've been doing. Because I feel like there's good progress being made there. It's generally useful. Um, it doesn't solve tag signing yet, but it solves the other elements, everything from how do you associate an artifact with it, sorry, a, a signature artifact with it to an SBOM, because I'm seeing a bunch of people ask about SBOM progress. So I'd like to make sure we get that stabilized in a place that people can actually use. Because prototype one was a hack to prove the concept. Nobody should run prototype one in any kind of scalable form. Prototype two, I think we have got a design that we can make that in a scalable form. So that's part of what I focus on, on two. And I think it's a defined range of stuff that I think we're solid to build upon. What I'd like to do with prototype three is pick up on the conversation that Brandon's kind of made a good point to run the signing of a tag to make sure that it's, um, we know that basically you need two pieces of information. Not only do you need push to the registry, but you need at least some access to the private key and, and that's signed. And I'm trying to be really careful to avoid any assumption around implementation detail, but I totally convinced maybe that we need a, to solve that. The other one that came up is um, this concept of the originating signature. 
is an interesting one also. We spent a lot of time talking about multiple signatures, which I think is extremely important. But there is a differentiation between the original signature of content. How do you know that Wabbit Networks was the original signature? Now, you may not care about Wabbit. You may only care about Docker Hub certified something and eventually intact new rockets. But there's something to be said of who was the originating author of the, the content. And something we have to kind of think about, similar to the way tag signing is not something a registry natively supports today. So we're going to have to figure out how to make some more changes to it. I think I want to go back and look at the OCI artifact manifest to see whether it be that or something else. I don't know yet. But I want to see how can we break this loop that the thing we're signing is a digest. So if you take the digest of the thing you're signing and then sign it, you can't update the digest because then the digest is different and you, you're constantly signing something that you have to change because you've signed it. So I want to figure out how we can do that with some level of confidence um, that we can, to some extent, stick the originating signature as a tightly coupled to the artifact. It's not a link. It's, a, it's always a link of some sort. I, I link is a loose word there. But the point is, is that they're not, you know that that was the originating signature as opposed to an associated signature after the fact. I think that the, the one thing I would add here as well is that I think that um, we're working on a, the tough prototype aspect as well. And I think maybe this is more like a prototype for, but figuring out what that integration could look like and whether that's something that makes sense um, moving forward. I really think that, you know, getting it working will I think help answer a lot of questions and get, get this whole thing moving. So I'll just, I'll just throw out there that that's another thing to be working on for anyone who's interested is um, getting tough integrated with some of the OCI artifact work that's been that's been happening. I, I want to actually try to get a conversation with the tough folks together of um, this concept of something has to be constantly updated is the part that really gives me the most angst. So I wanted to and I, I when I'm, we got two minutes left, I wanted to give Jan a moment, but Yes, yeah, so I want to figure out how to make progress on the expertise you guys bring. I'll put it that way. Jan, was yours quick? <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks, Steve. This is kind of a related to what you just uh, told about the prototyping, but uh, I would definitely like to know the end goal. What, what is the end goal for, for this uh, V2 work? Is it uh, like uh, going to be part of that CNCF project and, and is, is that going to be a new version coming out from there? Or are we end up into the totally new uh, kind of a product there in here? No, absolutely. Um, great, great point. So, you know, new people are joining and wonder like, what the hell's going on with this thing? What is this? So if you look at the notary, no, notary project, notary project, um, I purposely split that out from the other experiments and prototypes we're doing to be kind of like the website of what is the content that we're, we're working on. Um, and the latest conversations have helped me kind of form the, the thought process to um, integrity of content. Uh, is that you, Brandon? Who's sharing? I can't tell who's. Yes, oh, yeah, Brandon. Me. Thank Sorry. you. Perfect. Uh, I wanted to thank somebody, but the, the, I see the green bar at the top. So um, we're, it's really around the integrity of content. Once, you, If you ship a package and you put that safety label on top of it, when it gets to the other end, you want to know if it was cracked and, and modified. That's that's really kind of the main thing that I think we're trying to, to shoot for here. And maybe just making that statement and getting agreement on that, I think will help part of our goals that we've talked about. Um, the uh, And the idea is that if you look at the goals of the notary project, it is around signing content that can move between registries to support the consuming public content mantra. Um, you should not be, the, the world cannot be dependent on a single point of failure. Everybody has to have their own isolation. But the question is, if you pull content into your environment, how do you know it's the same content that you, you, you wanted? And when you generate content in your own environment, whether you publish it or keep it internal, how do you know it's still your content? So that's the goal of what we're trying to deliver. And then the timeline is, I am hopeful that we have a runnable solution by this summer that customers can use in their production environments. It's not to say it won't change, but I think we'll get out of a prototyping phase and prototype two, the output of prototype two should give us the beginnings of pieces that we could run in a, in a production-ish workload with a set of stability. 
it won't be complete. It won't have prototype two, won't have tag signing, for instance. Um, and we'll basically, we're going to keep on making iterations to the point where we feel like we've gotten to the point where this is good enough for now. And because no security is every finite, we got, we got to get to a point where we feel comfortable and then we'll build from there. Okay, that, that sounds good. Uh, and I also saw that the uh, uh, non goals is not the uh, compatibility with uh, Notary V1. So let's say I would like to build something on top of Notary v V1. And, and when V2 is coming out, it's not the uh, compatibility. Correct. With the, okay, so uh, it's kind of a, anyway, kind of a, on its own, this V2 will be, uh, will be kind of a, its own, uh, own, type of a thing. <laughs> well, we're learning what we did with Notary V1 and the fact that content can't move within a registry, much yeah. less across registries, yeah. was a fundamental stopper. And I think I put it in, I put it in some document somewhere that if we, oh, it was a PowerPoint presentation. I did this last week. If, if Notary 2 isn't easy enough to sign the content you have, then we failed. Like the result of Notary 2 should be like, this is no big deal. It doesn't matter there was a V1. There's because in practicality, there's almost no substantive usage of Notary V1. Okay. Like we use yeah. it, we, we implemented it in ACR and it sounds great and customers start to use it like, oh, this doesn't do anything I want. And mm -hmm. it's not just, we didn't do it as a marketing thing. We wanted to figure out, we want to learn. We put it out there. We realized like, wow, this really doesn't work. So um, I, we haven't heard anybody say that other than it sounds bad, is it really a problem that it's not going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I don't see it as a problem, but uh, yeah, uh, I was more interested about the the actual timing and and if you say that uh, this uh, uh, next uh, prototyping is, we are more close to be able to test and and run run it, kind of a not the full production environment, but uh, we we get more more ideas there, uh, and uh, you were saying like in. Maybe you get uh, something, uh, or we get something uh, more uh, by the by the summer, or or did I understood that right? Yeah, yeah. I so I want to be really careful to not make this an Azure thing by any fashion. Yeah. That's yeah. why you know I keep on leading to other people. We're we are gonna get a ver like uh, overall has already gotten some versions out. It's just it's not stable enough to use anything at scale. We will make some changes to Notary V. Sorry to. Docker distribution, CNCF distribution, which we have a fork of under the notary project. So if you go to notary project slash distribution, there are some changes that he's done there. Um, and yeah, if you want to pull up the PRs, that'd be, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you merged it there. Go to the, the pull request. We probably should just merge it because I realize this is a little bit um, prototype refer metadata store. Uh, the okay. second one, yeah, the bottom one. So that was prototype one and that is the demo if you go to the the nv2 slash docs slash nv2 demo um, that explains how to instance that registry and do the end-to-end -end demo like you can actually do this end-to-end -end demo today um, and so uh brand if you go to nv2 this one yeah and then go to docs and then the NV2 again, and then there's a demo script. Uh, that there's the readme, but then click on the demo script. That demo script is will take you from end to end and get the experience working. Um, oh, okay, yeah. And I yeah, pushed yeah. an image to make it easier so you don't have to build the image. So we'll get a prototype two version going and it'll be you'll be able to instance distribution locally. And then assuming it works the way we want it to work, will, and I'm hoping others will do this also, we'll start running a stamp of it in ACR in Azure so that customers can start using it in Azure. And I hope AWS and Google and Red Hat and Harbor and whoever else will do so as well um, so that we can continue to get the diversity of feedback to know that we actually got this where we think it's good enough. And prototype two won't be finally good enough, but I think if we can get digest signing, We've, we've started to make some progress and Brandon's completely convinced me on the tag signing. So we'll get tag signing figured out as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. This, this helped a lot. Uh, we are over, I, uh, I have to run uh, about others. Um, but let's, let's I, I wanna make a conscious effort. Let's try to get these things, uh, instead of referring to things that are in PRs, let's try to get some stable bases 
uh, committed. So, thanks, folks. Thank